Beginning this fifth unit regarding linear congruences, we're going to address just one at a time. What we're going to be doing is developing analogs of old algebra skills, okay? But instead of trying to solve equations where there is a variable x, we're going to be trying to solve equivalences where there is a variable x. And we're going to start at the simplest possible thing we could, linear congruences with one variable. Specifically, let's try to find solutions to 3 times x is equivalent to 6 modulo 7. Now, many people would simply divide by 3 and say the answer is 2. But there are other solutions. For example, if x is negative 12, 3 times x is negative 36, which is in fact 6 larger than a multiple of 7. So 3x is equivalent to 6 mod 7 when x is negative 12. 2 is a solution, but it's not the only solution. So can we find all solutions rather than just one? Well, 3 is relatively prime to 7. So if we multiply both sides of this equivalence by 3 inverse, we would get 3 inverse times 3 times x is equivalent to 3 inverse times 6. Now, 3 and 3 inverse multiply together to be equivalent to 1 modulo 7. So on the left, the 3 and the 3 inverse cancel each other out. They leave behind a 1. So whatever x's solve the original equivalence, they must be equivalent to the product 3 inverse times 6. Now, you have to be able to find 3 inverse mod 7. But 3 times 5 is 15. That's 1 larger than a multiple of 7. So 3 times 5 is equivalent to 1 modulo 7. In other words, 3 inverse is equivalent to 5 mod 7. So 3 inverse times 6 is equivalent to 30 mod 7. So any x which solves the original equivalence must be equivalent to 30 modulo 7. So while you can't divide by 3, you can actually cancel it from both sides. So 3 inverse times 3 is equivalent to 3 inverse, uh, 3 inverse times 3x, apologies, is equivalent to 3 inverse times 6 modulo 7. Now 6 is just 3 times 2. And then you can cancel that 3 and 3 inverse to get x is equivalent to 2 modulo 7. Notice that 30 is equivalent to 2 mod 7, so these are the same solutions we already found. So observe the following regarding solving linear equivalences in one variable. So a, b, and n are all given. a and b are any integers. n is a positive integer. x is the variable, and we want to find solutions to a times x is equivalent to b modulo n. If a and n are relatively prime, then we can multiply both sides by a inverse modulo n to just get x is equivalent to a inverse times b mod n. This is what we did on the previous slide. If a is also a factor of b, then b can be written as a times something, and then on the right-hand side, that a inverse times b is going to cancel out and leave behind just that other factor, k. But even if a isn't a factor of b, x is equivalent to a inverse times b completely solves the problem, as long as a was relatively prime to n and therefore it had a modular inverse to multiply by. What if a and n are not relatively prime, therefore a inverse mod n isn't a thing and you can't multiply by it? There might still be solutions. Just because a and n are not relatively prime doesn't mean there are no solutions to find. It only means that that method won't work. So for example, 3x equivalent to 6 mod 15 is still certainly solved by x equals 2. 6 is equal to 6, but 3 and 15 are definitely not relatively prime. So even though the coefficient of x 3 and the base 15 were not relatively prime, a and n were not relatively prime, there were still solutions to find here. There are actually other solutions as well. You can check that x equals 7 or x equals negative 8 still solve the original equivalence 3x equivalent to 6 mod 15. But the equivalence 2x is equivalent to 1 modulo 10 has no solutions at all. Okay, here is another scenario where a, the coefficient of x, is not relatively prime to n, the base, but here I claim there are no solutions to find at all, because indeed, suppose 2x is equivalent to 1 mod 10, so 2x is a multiple of 10 plus 1. Then 2x minus 10k would be equal to 1, and you can factor a 2 out of that, so we have just established that 2 is a factor of 1, which it isn't. So 2x equivalent to 1 mod 10 has no solutions, 
and 2 and 10 are not relatively prime. 3x equivalent to 6 mod 15 does have solutions, though 3 and 15 are not relatively prime. But in general, if ax is equivalent to b mod n and a and n are relatively prime, then multiplication by the inverse is a quick way to find the solution. Well, let's uh, try to establish what the difference in those examples was. The equivalence ax equivalent to b mod n has solutions if and only if the greatest common divisor of a and n is a factor of b. So a is the coefficient of x, n is the modular base, and b is this number on the other side of the equivalence sign. So if this holds, there is one solution modulo n divided by that greatest common divisor. Proof, let's address the if and only if claim. We'll deal with what the uh, solution is equivalent to in a minute. Suppose x0 is some integer that solves the original equivalence. Well then, a times x0 is equivalent to b mod n, so it is equal to a multiple of n plus b. I subtract that to the other side. And from Bezu's identity, since a linear combination of a and n is now equal to b, the greatest common factor must be a factor of b. Remember, Bezu's identity in its full power says that the set of linear combinations of two numbers is the same set as multiples of the GCD. So here we have one particular linear combination of a and n, therefore it must be a multiple of the GCD. Conversely, let's suppose that the GCD of a and n is a factor of b, then we need to show that solutions do exist. Well, if the GCD is a factor of b, we can write b is equal to the GCD times one integer. We can also write that a is the GCD times some integer and n is the GCD times some integer. The GCD of a and n is a factor of a and is a factor of n, and we're also assuming it's a factor of b. Now, because this was the greatest common factor of a and n, I get to also assume that these two numbers are relatively prime. I don't get to make a corresponding assumption regarding this number j sub 1. This is the GCD of a and n. It just happens to also be a factor of b, but it might not be the largest common factor of the three numbers or anything like that. Well, from the original um, equation, ax equivalent to b mod n, we can write a which is the GCD times j2 times the variable x should be equivalent to b modulo this. And now observe that there is a shared factor of a and n in all three terms here. So I can cancel these out from the modular equivalence as long as I also divide out by the greatest common divisor of this number, the GCD of a and n, and the original base, which was just n. So whatever number this is, it's the largest common factor of a and n, so it's a factor of n. So what's the GCD of this number and n? Just this number again, so it cancels out from here quite directly. So now we just have a new modular equivalence, but with a bit more information that j2 and j3 are relatively prime. Since j2 and j3 are relatively prime, we can multiply by its inverse modulo j3 and solve for x. So if we have a solution, then the GCD is a factor of b. But if this GCD is a factor of b, there are solutions to find. But what we've actually shown is that all solutions are given by something equivalent to one value modulo j3. j3 was exactly n over the GCD from up here. So we've actually addressed this remaining claim as well. When solutions do exist, which we now know is if and only if, um, <clears throat> the greatest common factor of the coefficient and the base is a factor of the other target number, when solutions exist, they must be equivalent to one particular value modulo j3. So any two solutions would both be equivalent to the same thing modulo j3. In other words, there's only one solution modulo j3, which was n divided by that GCD. Let's work through an example. Find the largest negative solution to 8x equivalent to 6 mod 18. The first thing we want to check is whether there are solutions at all. The coefficient 8 and the base 18, their greatest common factor is 2, which is indeed a factor of 6. Since it's a factor of all terms, including the base, we can cancel it out to get 4x equivalent to 3 modulo 9. 
Now, 4 is relatively prime to 9, so we can compute its inverse. 4 times 7 is 28. Well, that's one larger than a multiple of 9. So 4 inverse is equivalent to 7 mod 9. So if I multiply both sides right here by 7, aka 4 inverse, it'll cancel out this 4, and over here we'll just get a 21. So any solution is equivalent to 21 modulo 9, and conversely, anything con um, equivalent to 21 modulo 9 will be a solution to the original equivalents, 8x equivalent to 6 mod 18. But we were asked to find the largest negative solution. So we need to find the largest negative integer that satisfies x is equivalent to 21 modulo 9. But since we're working mod 9, I can subtract it without changing the value. So I subtract 9 three times from 21, and I'll end up with negative 6. So negative 6 is, in fact, the largest negative number that solves 8 times x is equivalent to 6 mod 18. To do another example, let's find two different prime numbers that solve 15 times x is equivalent to 40 modulo 95. 15 and 95 have a GCD of 5, which is a factor of 40, so there are at least some solutions to find that are integers. We cancel it out to get the equivalent um, statement, 3x equivalent to 8 modulo 19. So now we just need to solve this, and that will solve the original. So we're looking for two prime numbers that solve 3x equivalent to 8 mod 19. 3 and 19 are now relatively prime, so 3 inverse exists. We can compute it to be equivalent to 13. 3 times 13 is equivalent to 1 modulo 19. So if I multiply both sides by 13, 3 and 13 cancel out. Their product is 39. That's equivalent to 1 mod 19. And 8 times 13 is 104. 104 is relatively prime to 19, which means there are infinitely many primes that satisfy x is equivalent to 104 mod 19. However, the best way to actually find them is just to brute force it. We're going to list out integers congruent to 104 mod 19 and check by hand which ones are prime until we have found two of them. So for example, 104 is definitely not prime because it's divisible by 2. If I subtract 19, we get 85, but that's clearly a multiple of 5. If we subtract 19, we get 66, which is even. If we subtract 19, we get 47, which is actually a prime number. 28, however, is not prime, it's even. 9 is not prime, it's 3 times 3. And if I were to subtract 19 again, we'd start getting negative numbers. And remember, primes are not allowed to be negative. So 104 is where we started, and subtracting 19 one by one, we only found a single prime. So let's add it instead. 104 plus 19 is 123. That's divisible by 3. Plus 19 again is 142. Uh, that is even. 161 is divisible by something. Let's see, 161, it's not even, it's not divisible by 3 or 5, but it is divisible by 7. 180 is even, so it's definitely not prime. 199, however, is actually a prime number. So we have now found two prime numbers that are equivalent to 104 modulo 19 and therefore solve the original equivalents. We could keep going. Dirichlet's theorem does tell us that if I keep adding 19 to get equivalent numbers mod 19, there's going to be infinitely many numbers in this list that are prime, but we were only asked to find two of them, so we may as well just stop here. One more example to close this section out. Find the second smallest prime number, so not the smallest, but the second smallest prime, which has two digits, so of all of the primes with two digits, find the second smallest, but it has to be from ones that solve. 21x is equivalent to 10 modulo 33. So once we find all solutions, we're looking for primes that have two digits, and then amongst those, find the second smallest one. This sounds a bit tedious. However, the GCD of the coefficient 21 and 33 is 3, which is not a factor of 10, which means there aren't any solutions to find at all. So while this looked like it may have been kind of a pain to get through, there are in fact no solutions to find, so it's a pretty easy one to finish this out.